Today we are talking about old maps and oh, this is one of my favorite subjects and I was so excited to see this note come in from Donna where she wrote, uh, I would love for you to do a video on how to locate old maps where we might be able to help plot where our brick wall families lived. So thank you, Donna, for that request. We are going to jump into that here in just a moment. But hey, if this is your first time here, my name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video. Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that are in the description box below. I would like to point out this is not sponsored, so I do appreciate your support and whatever level that you provide it. And thanks to YouTube, they have now created a thanks button for one-time donations. So um, that is now available as well. There is a handout for this episode and the handout is available for the uh, channel members at the information access level and the patrons at the happy dance level and they are available at genealogytv.org. All right, we're gonna jump over to the computer and locate some old maps. I am so excited about this because maps are one of my very favorite things to do uh, in genealogy research and they are some of the coolest finds and I have to start off with this one because this is one of my favorite coolest maps I have ever found. This one is from 1885 uh, in Laramie, Wyoming. As you can see it came from the state archives. The cool part about using state archives for map collections is a lot of times you can download a high resolution uh, maps and look at the detail. I mean, I can zoom in. I can see the scratch marks on on some of this Okay, so the cool thing is in this particular map if we go zoom in uh, a little bit so here you can see the railroads in Laramie, Wyoming But it also gives you the street level Information and if you get really down into the granular level you can see the people who owned the properties at these various locations. And so, of course, you know me, I have to play with um, graphics. And so what I did was I took that same map and here it is on my computer and I outlined, I downloaded the really high resolution image and I have outlined where my family lived. This is my Madsen family. These are the Danish folks uh, who lived in Laramie, Wyoming. This is Christopher Madsen's property. And so, uh, you know, you can sit there and, and add stuff with any paint program, add little boxes or whatever. I was putting together this, this video a while ago about my ancestors. This was the Gem City grocery store that they owned. So it's kind of cool. I mean, there's, there's just all kinds of stuff. And if we, uh, come over here I make a comment about this is where they worked my grandmother used to tell me about um, them walking from their house she would walk from their house down the street and take their lunchbox to her grandfather and her father while they were working on in the railroad yard so she would walk down the street uh, from the Madsen so anyhow maps can really help tell the story so this is a really uh, a cool one so now that I've uh, teased you with some very cool maps, I think one of the very first places that you should look for maps is at the state archives in which you are researching. I would say that they probably have one of the largest collections of maps out there, the state archives that is. The other place that you might wanna look is to go to the Library of Congress. Now, the, the Library of Congress has a variety of maps, and so it's just a matter of searching around and finding it. Now, one of the things that I find interesting in the maps that we find at the Library of Congress and in other places are railroad maps. So there's a variety of maps we're gonna be talking about, and so we're just gonna kinda go through that. The handout has a list of all the different maps that I typically go after. 
Um, but some of the things that you might want to think about when you are doing your family history research is, you know, how did your family migrate from point A to point B? Well, take a look at railroad maps for the era in which your ancestors were living because it could be that they took the railroad. In the later 1800s, it was a whole lot safer to take the railroads than it was to do the wagon train thing across, you know, the, the trails. But, you know, it just depends on the era in which you're researching. That's another tip is to go check out uh, the Library of Congress. Now, we could get into the Sanborn maps. The Sanborn maps you can find in a variety of places. I have found them at my local library, the original Sanborn maps. I have found them here on the Library of Congress. Um, Sanborn maps were insurance maps. These maps were created, insurance companies could assess the value of the property and how safe they were. So these Sanborn maps are incredibly helpful. I'm just going to click into one. The cool part about the ones at the Library of Congress, all maps at the Library of Congress, is the level of detail that you can get to in these maps. And so when you scroll in so tight, you can see the names of some of the companies and or people uh, that are listed here. Now, in this case, it looks like it's mostly business names that they're listing, but... Um, if your, if your ancestor like mine did owned a grocery store, uh, this could be very, very helpful. So the level of maps at the library of Congress in a variety of, of, of ways is to do that. And that's just at loc.gov. And, uh, you can get to a lot of these maps for the Sanborn maps. You can just, uh, search Sanborn born. See, it's already popping up Sanborn maps and hit go and it's going to take you to this higher level area but you could do sanborn maps for a specific uh, location one thing i do want to point out about sanborn maps is that they're not necessarily in rural areas you're going to find them in towns townships and cities where there's a lot of buildings together okay before we move on to specific websites we're going to talk a little bit about the kinds of maps you might be looking for they could be things like postal maps which is one of my favorite things to find they're difficult to find but if you can find them far out uh, agricultural maps might help show some of the um, agriculture that's being farmed in the area in which your ancestors live census maps those are enumeration maps general historical maps that you know were just created in a variety of eras right everything from the 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 king of england might have uh requested some folks to go out and survey the land as it was being developed before uh, the united states and canada and all that was established they were you know explorers going out and mapping the area you might have uh, soil maps um, gis maps boundary maps migration maps Land and deed maps. Oh my gosh, if you can find those, those are awesome. Um, road and bridge work maps. Now, I happen to have a bunch of books from the areas that I'm researching. So road records were created usually by the county. And those records were created when your ancestors lived on a stretch of land. They had to get together and maintain that uh, road with their neighbors so they might pick a a weekend or something and they're going to go out and fix all the the holes and repair the bridges and that kind of stuff so it was the town people the county people that were living on those roads that got together in certain times so a lot of times you can find your ancestors in those road records these records came from the north carolina state archives this happens to be randolph county and some folks went out there and extracted that information from the roads records and the roads and bridge records um, that are held at the state archives, and then they published them in books and indexed them. So, I mean, that can be beneficial if you can find that. And those often have maps. Now, those maps that are in these books a lot of times came from the state archives. So, again, 
State Archives, right, is a great resource for um, maps. Now, you might have also geographical maps, top, you know, topo maps, um, military maps during wars, especially. You might be able to see where where troops were moving and, and, and that kind of thing. Those maps could be very helpful. And then there's good old fashioned Google Maps and Google Earth. And in some cases, some of these universities and various websites are overlaying historic maps on top of Google Earth or Google Maps uh, so that you can see the old map laid on top of uh, topographical maps. I've seen a, a variety of things. Um, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to get back to some specific websites that have maps. Okay, here's one. Now, this is from the Atlas of Historic County Boundaries on the Newberry Library website. Um, that's at digital.newberry.org. Okay, so you can find that there. They have interactive maps and stuff as well. So at mapofus.org, they also have these uh, U.S. interactive maps, which is kind of cool. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And you can either hit play, which you can do. You can also drill into the sp specific states, but watch this. So you can hit next, 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 and watch the counties and states being formed as the United States is being developed through time. And you can see the different uh, years. It's not perfect, but... Uh, it is certainly fun. You can also drill into uh, county levels by searching for those as well. They have a variety of maps. Again, that's mapofus.org. I would be a fool if I did not mention the David Rumsey map collection. That's at davidrumsey.com. They have so many maps. And they also do some of this uh, Google Earth, Google Maps overlay uh, stuff. But it... It is definitely a fun website. Uh, you can do all kinds of things. Look at this. See what they're doing? They're they're taking historic maps and lay them over Google Earth. And uh, so, I mean, this is an area that you just have to get in and start searching and start playing. And uh, before you know it, you're going to find all kinds of stuff. Um, they... Pay attention to some restrictions. You know, there, there may be some restrictions on how you can upload or whether you can upload some of these maps. But um, this, this collection alone is just huge. It's, you could spend all day looking in this website alone. Look at this map. This map is of the Eastern United States in 1802. But look at the detail. When you start to scroll in... Look at the detail. Holy cow. These are some cool old maps. Don't forget historical societies and genealogical societies often have maps. So make sure that you are looking, you know, and quite frankly, you should be joining the historical and genealogical societies in the areas in which you are researching anyway, because the experts on those areas are there as well. So they may be able to help you with some of those historical maps. Be sure to check out the Bureau of Land Management website. Um, that's at blm.gov. Now, you want to check that out for land records. I have found a lot of, of stuff on here. And you can also look um, at some of the regions that they have. And they also have a section on maps. But you can want to look for the land and deed records here um, for a lot of the western United States. Great stuff over here. And when you get into the level of detail of the maps that they have over here, um, you'll be amazed. Okay, so Family Search is also going to show you where there are a lot of maps for the areas in which you're researching. So if you are at the uh, Research Wiki, right? Search, Research Wiki on Family Search, okay? We're going to drill into the United States and then we're going to pick, uh, let's go with Texas. And one of the things that you can do then is pop over here on the right hand side. You can see uh, a list of maps and gazetteers. Say that 10 times real fast. Maps and gazetteers. All right, we can click into maps. Let's open that one. We're going to click into gazetteers and we'll talk about that briefly. Maps of Texas, they're giving you some more information here. They're talking about the universities. And again, universities are a huge resource 
uh, for maps, and a lot of times they're the only place you're going to find some of the maps, uh, those historical maps. So um, you'll want to be checking those uh, university websites, and FamilySearch points you to a lot of them with these hyperlinks, okay? Gazetteers. So gazetteers are kind of a collection of, it, it's a place to, to figure out if you've got some backwoods kind of name and you're not sure where this is, you can use gazetteers to help you figure out where they are. So um, a, there are some online gazetteers. Um, I know for North Carolina, there is actually a printed book that I use quite often. Check out the gazetteers on Family Search. They may be able to help you. Also know that at Ancestry, if you go to search and you go to card catalog, we come here and then we can drop down to maps, atlases, and gazetteers. And again, you can look for uh, gazetteers and maps. Now, I know that Ancestry, and I believe Family Search does too, has um, arrangements with some of the state archives to host uh, some of the maps on their websites. So you want to be checking family search in ancestry as well but you also want to go to the archives website because why search engines work differently they might not have everything so just be mindful of that that you want to be able to uh, search in the area in which you're researching both on ancestry and family search and maybe even my heritage it just depends you know if you're searching in european uh, co uh, countries or um, in Canada, there's going to be all these different archives and places to go. Um, but maybe you start with Ancestry and Family Search, but then get outside the box and go search in other places. So one of the cool things you can do, I'm here on the you know, USGS.gov website, and I'm on the Topo Maps view. And you can pick a location, and you can pin a location. And then it's got historic maps listed here, right? And you can then drill into those maps and, and take a peek. So if we want to see the map, let me see if I can zoom in. And we can continue to zoom. Now, on the front end of this website, there's a whole explanation as to uh, the transparency and how it can overlay with current maps. Um, and you can download JPEGs and all kinds of stuff. Now you can download some of these maps and then bring them into uh, various software. I have been playing around with Deed Mapper. It's a little challenging to use at first, but the, um, on his website, on his website at Deed Mapper, he has a whole bunch of test uh, tutorials. And so you can learn how to download these maps, bring them into Deed Mapper, and here is where I have been plotting some of my ancestors' land. And you can see it's not perfect because I've been goofing around with it, but you can take the, out of the table view, these are deeds and land records that I have, right? And then um, what you do is you take all of the description out of the deeds, and then you can plot that on the map. You can see, let me scroll down here, where I have been overlaying, and you can see the shapes are kind of lining up with, like one deed uh, is lining up with another deed. And so anyway, long story short, you can take those topo maps off of the USGS website and then overlay it into a deed mapper. So if I zoom all the way out, I'll give you a high level view. So this is a map that I got from Deed Mapper. And these are, this is an overlay that you have to lay on top of the map. And I try and line up the roads as best I could and then start plotting the uh, different land records as I got them out of the deeds. I have a ton to do on this. And it's a challenge, especially in the eastern part of the United States, because you know, they went from the rock to the tree and south-southwest to the river and then meandered along the river to the next tree. And so sometimes it's challenging to figure out where they plot on the map. Sometimes you get lucky and it will talk about a neighbor's line. And sometimes if you can figure out the neighbor's property, then you can figure out your property. But um, Deed Mapper is certainly another part of our mapping conversation. So one last thing I wanted to show you 
taking it back to the very first map I showed you in Laramie, Wyoming, on the left-hand side is that map. On the right-hand side is a census record where you can see I have managed to take note of what was in the census record. And you can actually see as the census taker was walking down the street, the names line up with what is on the map. I hope that was helpful. There's more information in the description box. And well, there are videos on the screen for you for more genealogy, more family tree information. So we'll see you in the next one.